सिंगल फील्ड एनालिसिस विजुअल फील्ड प्रिंट आउट कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन टू एट जोन टू इंटरप्रेट इट सिस्टमैटिकली The details displayed on the top of the printout includes patient name, identification number, date of birth, age, date and time of testing, pupil diameter, visual acuity and refractive error correction used during the test. The Humphrey perimeter uses background illumination of 31.5 apostolic to saturate rod receptors. producing photopic conditions in which cones are primarily tested the goldman white size 3 stimulus has been established as standard in automated threshold visual field testing as normative data and progression event analysis applications apply only to testing with this stimulus size sizes 1 2 and 4 are almost never used while size 5 is sometimes employed in advanced visual field loss which extends the availability of sensitivity range however it cannot be used with the seta testing strategies but only with the more time consuming older testing algorithms also one will no longer have the benefit of normative database or the humphrey guided progression analysis The Humphrey perimeter offers three primary threshold testing strategies: CETA standard, CETA fast, and CETA faster. The most recently developed CETA faster strategy takes about half the testing time of CETA standard, and its repeatability is same as that of CETA fast. The 32-2 test pattern consists of 76 test points spaced 6 degrees apart. In 24-2 test pattern consists of 54 test points spaced 6 degrees apart. CETA faster 24-2 C test pattern has been added to the testing options of the Humphrey Visual Field Analyzer 3 perimeter which adds an extra 10 macular test points to the 24-2 test. In advanced stages of glaucoma when mainly central island of vision remains one can switch to the 10-2 test pattern which covers the area within 10 degree of fixation with a grid of 68 test points spaced every 2 degree when the vision is limited to the central 5 degree the macular test can be used which consists of a square grid of 16 points placed 2 degrees apart and centered around the point of fixation the humphrey field analyzer offers four fixation targets The most commonly used fixation option is the central fixation target which consists of a small light emetic diode mounted in a hole located at the very center of the bowl. The large diamond is useful for patients with central scotomas such as those caused by ARMD. Here patients are instructed to look at the center of the diamond. The small diamond consists of four LEDs. and is used when performing a foveal threshold measurement here the patient is instructed to gaze at the center of the diamond the bottom led is automatically used in the peripheral testing patterns that have points in the superior field that require a lower fixation target in reliability indices fixation loss errors false positive response and false negative response errors are calculated Fixation loss errors can be tested by Hegel Krakow method in which intense stimuli are presented in the presumed location of patient's physiological blind spot assuming that if the patient responds to such stimuli it suggests an unsteadiness of gaze This method has shortcomings as often pseudo fixation loss can occur if patient's blind spot is not plotted properly The amount of gaze data provided by this method is limited as only a few blind spot checks to mili can be presented during a test and the fixation checks add to the test time hence the new seta faster strategies relies by default upon gaze tracking and not on fixation loss catch trials the gaze tracker on the humphrey perimeter measures gaze direction with a precision of about 2 degrees and automatically records gaze direction each time a stimulus is presented gaze tracking results are shown on the perimetrist video screen during testing and are presented at the bottom of the test report
The false positive response error score measures the tendency of patient to press the response button even when no stimulus has been seen. With the CETA strategies, the patient responses that are made at impossible or unlikely times are used to estimate false positive responses, which includes responses made too soon or too late after stimulus presentation, considering patient's reaction time measured during the same test. False negative response errors identifies inattentive patients when by retesting a previously tested location with a stimulus brighter than the measured threshold value, no response is detected. The numerical map shows the measured decibel sensitivity at each tested point and is the basic information upon which all other analysis are based. The light stimulus intensity can be varied over a range between 0.1 and 10,000 apostolips with 0 decibel corresponding to the maximum intensity that the perimeter can produce and 50 decibel corresponding to 0.1 apostolip. The grayscale is an intuitive way of presenting numerical threshold sensitivities with darker areas indicating regions having lower sensitivity than lighter areas. It helps in identifying artifactual findings and is also useful in identifying typical disease-specific visual field defect patterns. The total deviation numerical map shows the difference from age-corrected normal values in decibels with positive values denoting points showing better than normal sensitivity and negative values denoting worse than normal sensitivity. The statistical significance of these deviations from normal are indicated in the total deviation probability map in which deviations are highlighted when they are worse than those found in 5%, 2%, 1% and 0.5% of sensitivities in the normal subjects who are the same age as the patient. A key showing the meaning of these symbols is given near the bottom of the report. The pattern deviation numerical map shows deviation levels in decibels for each tested point after adjustment has been made to remove any generalized depression or elevation of the overall hill of vision. The pattern deviation of the 7th highest sensitivity value becomes zero and the deviation of all the other test locations are adjusted by the same amount. The pattern deviation probability map uses the same symbols as total deviation plots to identify points that are depressed by statistically significant amounts compared to the range of values typically found in the normal subjects. Glaucoma hemifield test is an artificial intelligence based analysis that provides plain language classification of 24-2 and 30-2 test results. It is based upon patterns of loss commonly seen in glaucoma. Pattern deviation scores in each of the five zones in the upper hemifield are compared to the findings in the mirror image zones in the inferior hemifield. Scoring differences between mirror image zones are compared to normative significance limits specific to each zone pair. The possible test outcomes are outside normal limits, borderline, generalized reduction of sensitivity, abnormally high sensitivity, and within normal limits. Three summary indices of visual field status which appear on the single field analysis printout are visual field index, mean deviation and pattern standard deviation. Visual field index is an improved version of older mean deviation index that is less affected by cataract than mean deviation except in fields having mean deviation worse than minus 20 decibels where cataract effects are similar. Visual field index is approximately 100% in normal fields and 0% in perimetrically blind fields. Mean deviation is a weighted average of the values presented in the total deviation numerical plot with a mean deviation of 0 indicating no deviation from normal and large negative values being associated with advanced visual field loss. Pattern standard deviation reflects irregularities in the field such as those caused by localized field defects. Near normal and advanced visual field defects will both have low pattern standard deviation and the largest PSD will be registered for focal deep visual field defect.